In the unscripted realm of live television, shocking and unsettling moments have occasionally unfolded, laying bare the deeply ingrained prejudices that still exist in our society. But uh, I don't like him on the fact that he's black. These televised instances, often unexpected and raw, serve as stark reminders of the persistence of racism in our world today. I have a black man hammering a white woman. He's been stalking me. From offhand remarks that ignite firestorms of controversy to blatant displays of discrimination caught in real time, these racist moments on live TV force us to confront uncomfortable truths and question the progress we've made in our ongoing battle against prejudice and discrimination. See, that's why I can't be left alone with a black woman. We are oh, done so here. Please, Have a great rest of your day. Join us as we have a look at 15 racist moments caught on live television. Number one, breaking down prejudice. In this interesting scene, a group talks while watching different individuals on the screen. What's important is that they believe that no matter what someone has done or if you don't like a certain group of people, you should never blame someone for their actions just because of their race. Here's a man in a bright purple outfit who says something really mean. He connects a person's actions to their race and it's not good. I don't like Mike. Well, okay, I'm going to say that he's a... Uh... Looks like he's native Texas, and being from Texas, I would have to support that. But uh, I don't like him on the fact that he's black. Absolutely not. We can see that one black person in the group is clearly upset by what the man in purple said. When they ask the man why he doesn't like black people or why he says a lot of derogatory things about them, he talks about his past experiences being the reason. Is it about black people that you don't like? Based on the experience and the people I've worked with, uh, where I come from, um, I, I'm sick and tired of people thinking, uh, specifically I am mentioning black people, thinking we owe them something. But let's be clear here, talking about the past does not make it okay to say mean things about an entire group of people or an entire race. In a world where we should appreciate and include people from all backgrounds, we should also remember that we judge people based on what they do, not on the race that they are. It's important to understand that race should never be a reason to mistreat anyone. We should always remember that we're all human, which should be the most important thing when interacting with others. So, as we watch this powerful moment, let's learn that being kind, understanding, and fair to everyone is much better than being prejudiced or mean. Number 2. Confronting Racism a powerful moment unfolds before our eyes in a world where diversity should be celebrated. The man you saw on the screen was once a critic. These neo-nationalists directed his unwarranted criticism towards the woman on his left side simply because of her African heritage. But the audience bore witness to something extraordinary, a moment that defied hatred and prejudice. As the woman faced the mockery at the very beginning of the show, the host had a surprise in store. That surprise was the physics of compassion, the profound understanding that we're all part of, the same human family despite our diverse backgrounds. And then a thunderous applause erupted, not for hatred, but unity. Craig Paul Cobb has undergone DNA testing to determine genetic ancestry. 86% European and... Uh... <laughs> Give it to him! Give it to him! 14% Sub-Saharan African! Because when you ask yourself why we must stand together against racism, the answer is crystal clear. The pain inflicted by racism has no place in our world. The applause was not only for a driver, but it was for humanity, and while some may label it an inappropriate act, it was a powerful reminder that together we can put prejudice in its place. This moment where the audience applauded for her reaction spoke volumes showing that when we come together and refuse to let our differences define us, we can rise above the hurtful jokes that once divided us. It revealed that deep down, we recognize that we're all connected and share a common humanity that transcends the boundaries of race, ethnicity, and prejudice. So let this moment inspire us all to reject racism, embrace diversity, and applaud the unity that can heal our world. We can create a future where love and understanding triumph over hatred and bigotry. Number 3. Unintentional Stereotype Perpetuation 
In this brief clip, a news anchor from a prominent network unintentionally made a comment that regrettably perpetuated stereotypes. It's essential to remember that we all make mistakes, but it's equally crucial to learn from them and promote a world that values diversity and inclusivity. The comment in question, as usual, we bring them over here and we teach a bunch of Chinamen, uh, Chinese people, how to introduce new computers. They go back to China. As usual, we bring them over here and we teach a bunch of Chinamen, uh, Chinese people how to do, do computers. They go back to China. It was a lapse in judgment, and acknowledging that such remarks do not reflect the vast majority's beliefs is important. Often, they stem from ignorance rather than malice. The incident serves as a reminder that even well-intentioned individuals can inadvertently perpetuate stereotypes. However, we must also encourage open dialogue and education to eradicate these biases from our society. Rather than condemning, we should strive to inform, enlighten, and promote cultural understanding instead of casting blame. We should seize this moment to foster empathy and mutual respect, and by doing so, we can move towards a more harmonious, inclusive future where such comments become relics of the past. Number 4. Tucker Carlson's 2013 Remarks on Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton In this clip, Tucker Carlson makes a statement about Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton that deserves attention. We break it down in a way that promotes unity and understanding while discouraging racism. Tucker Carlson commented on Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, suggesting that they should not be labeled civil rights leaders. Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton do not deserve to be called civil rights leaders. They are not. They are hustlers and pimps who make a living off inflaming racial tension. It's essential to remember that discussions that surround prominent figures should be rooted in respect and fairness. While we may have differing opinions on their methods or strategies, it's crucial not to resort to derogatory labels. Prominent figures like Jackson and Sharpton have played significant roles in advocating for civil rights and racial justice in America. Their activism, speeches, and community engagement have all sparked important conversations on the topics and critical issues, and by dismissing them as hustlers and pimps, we risk losing sight of the progress they've helped to achieve. It's essential to encourage constructive dialogue about the approaches and ideologies of civil rights leaders, and we should avoid using divisive language that only serves to deepen racial tensions. Instead, let's engage in respectful conversations about how we can work together to address the challenges of racial inequality in our society. Promoting unity while discouraging racism means discussing controversial topics respectfully and empathetically. We should strive for a society where we can have open, honest, and inclusive conversations about civil rights, acknowledging the diverse perspectives contributing to progress. Number 5. Critiquing Divisive Rhetoric and Building Bridges of Empathy In this enlightening discussion featuring Brent Bozell, an important message of unity and respect shines through, urging everyone to rise above the divisive rhetoric plaguing our society. During a segment on Fox News, he delicately critiques a potentially offensive remark, demonstrating the need for more thoughtful discourse. In this dialogue, he highlights a hypothetical scenario where one commentator by the name of Sean Hannity makes a concerning comment about former President Barack Obama. In, in one sentence, he made a comment about, say, the President of the United States and said that he looked like a, a skinny, ghetto crackhead, uh, which, by the way, you might want to say that Barack Obama does. It's crucial to emphasize that such remarks have no place in public discourse, and we have to remember that our words carry weight, and they can either contribute to the betterment of our society or perpetuate the stereotype. By choosing words like skinny ghetto crackhead to describe our former president, we risk further deepening the divisions that have already marred our nation's progress. We should instead promote inclusivity, understanding, and respect for all individuals, regardless of their background or political beliefs. In this era, we have to come together to build bridges of empathy and compassion, and we should celebrate our differences while engaging in conversation that unites us rather than divides us. Our words can shape a brighter future where racism and bigotry have no place. Number 6. Brian Kilmeade's Remark on Genetic Diversity and the Need for Unity In this intriguing clip from July of 2009, Brian Kilmeade makes a rather unconventional remark about the genetic diversity of Americans. He playfully suggests that Americans are not genetically pure because they choose to marry individuals from different backgrounds, almost as if they're a different species. 
Yeah. The Swedes have uh, pure genes because okay. they marry other Swedes because that's the rule. Finland, <laughs> Finns marry other Finns, so they have a pure society. In America, we marry everybody. It's a bizarre notion, but it brings up a pressing question. Can we truly end harmful stereotypes based on ethnicity and race? Though delivered with a hint of humor, Kilmeade's statement touches on a deeply rooted issue in society, the tendency to categorize people based on their backgrounds. He mentions the idea of pure genes marrying other Swedes. However, the comment takes a surprising turn as he acknowledges the rich tapestry of America where people from diverse ethnicities and backgrounds come together through marriage. The reaction on the host's face is a mixture of confusion and astonishment, reflecting the absurdity of his statement. It's a stark reminder that we live in a world where such outdated ideas persist, and in today's world, we should celebrate the beauty of our diversity, the strength of embracing different cultures, and the love that knows no boundaries. Instead of perpetuating the stereotype, we should strive for unity while understanding and appreciating one another. After all, it is our shared humanity that truly matters. Number 7. Lessons in Humor, Apology and Consequences this captivating clip reminds us that companionship is usually a delightful experience. However, there's a vital lesson in this that television hosts and professionals alike should listen to. It's crucial to discern the correct time, place, and audience for humor, especially when it comes to making sarcastic comments. As we've highlighted earlier, a person's reputation and image carry significant weight. In a mere instant, the power of social media can amplify any misstep, and in this one, the online community swiftly reacted, accusing the driver of racism. The following day, he took the admirable step of issuing a public apology during a live program to his colleague. Because I want to apologize, not only to my co-anchor, Jason, but to our entire community. From the bottom of my heart, I apologize for what I said. I know it was wrong, and I am so sorry. The fact that his apology was accepted is commendable and demonstrates the importance of acknowledging and rectifying one's mistakes. However, the uncertainty looms over what transpired with the driver after the program. It's a stark reminder that the consequences of our words and actions can extend well beyond a mere apology. Let this be a rallying call for everyone to strive for empathy while understanding the unity instead of resorting to divisive and hurtful rhetoric. We can build a world that values inclusivity and harmony over discrimination and prejudice. Number 8. Addressing a Controversial Discussion on Argentine Television in the world of television, where discussions and debates often take center stage, it is not uncommon to witness heated exchanges and questionable comments. However, we have to steer clear of divisive remarks that touch on sensitive issues such as race. During a recent program on Argentine television, a conversation about a couple took an unexpected turn when the topic shifted to their newborn baby, who had a beautiful shade of skin different from what some would consider to be usual. As the hosts continued the dialogue, the atmosphere becomes charged with curiosity and unfortunately a touch of ignorance. They ask about the baby's skin color, wondering aloud why the child was born with darker skin. When infused with surprise and skepticism, such comments can perpetuate harmful stereotypes and inadvertently encourage racism. We have to remember that diversity is a hallmark of our society, and every individual, regardless of their skin color or background, deserves respect and acceptance. In this age of connectivity, even seemingly harmless remarks can spread like wildfire on the internet, giving rise to controversy and further entrenching misconceptions. We should not forget that a baby's skin color, whether it reflects their heritage or any other background, is a natural and beautiful aspect of their identity. Embracing diversity and refraining from making unwarranted warranted comments is the path to a more inclusive and harmonious world. We should celebrate the uniqueness of each individual and discourage any form of racism, no matter how subtle it may manifest. Together, we can ensure that every child, regardless of skin color, is celebrated as a symbol of hope, love, and unity. Number 9. Embracing Unity and Equality in the Face of a Momentary Lapse in this compelling clip, we encounter a momentary lapse in judgment, a fleeting blunder that reminds us of the importance of unity and equality. It's a reminder that we must challenge stereotypes and prejudices that continue to persist in our society. The speaker momentarily stumbled into a regrettable statement, suggesting that poverty diminishes a person's potential. However, we should pause and reflect on the more broad truth the circumstances of one's birth does not define one's worth or capability. Regardless of their economic background, 
every individual possesses the same potential for greatness, it's essential to emphasize that poverty does not determine a person's intelligence, potential for success, or inherit worth. The idea that poor children are just as bright and just as tall as white children resonates deeply with the spirit of inclusivity and unity. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids, wealthy kids, black kids, Asian kids. No, I really mean it, but think how we think about it. This message promotes the idea that all children deserve equal opportunities and respect regardless of their background. And when the speaker realized his mistake, he attempted to rectify it, showing everyone that we all make errors, but how we respond is what truly matters. The effort to correct this misstep and encourage a culture of understanding and empathy should be applauded. In a world where diversity is our strength, we should remember that each individual, irrespective of their economic status or race, has the potential to shine brightly and contribute to the tapestry of our society. Together, we discourage racism and prejudice, leading to a world where everyone can reach their full potential regardless of their background. Number 10. Challenging Stereotypes and Promoting Understanding in this clip, we discuss zombies with a twist of awareness and inclusivity. Imagine you're gathered around engaging in a game show that's all about understanding the undead. Contestant Christy is trying her best to name something that she knows about zombies, but when she mentions black... Name something you know about zombies. Christy. Black. They're black. Okay. Remember that she's referring to their physical appearance, not their ethnicity. Christie's attempt to describe zombies while remembering that they come in various shades, just like any other fictional creature, it's essential to embrace diversity even in a world of the undead. Now when someone humorously remarks that they don't know if zombies are white, let's take it as a playful reminder that these creatures do not discriminate based on race or color. In fact, the idea of zombies transcends such a boundary. As the banter continues, we may feel as though it's getting personal, but remember that humor can sometimes tread on delicate ground. It's vital not to misinterpret these remarks as an attack on any particular group, but instead focus on the underlying message. Zombies are not defined by their appearance, and we shouldn't stereotype them based on characteristics. So, the next time that you watch a zombie-themed show like The Walking Dead, you should remember that zombies are meant to be a diverse horde of the undead, and we should enjoy fiction and entertainment while not equating them with real-world stereotypes or biases. Inclusivity and understanding should shine brightly, even in the darkest of zombie-infested worlds. Number 11. Unscripted Television and unintentional racial insensitivity. In this captivating clip, the charismatic host beckons everyone to embark on an unforgettable journey that transcends borders while embracing the tapestry of human diversity. We find ourselves transported to the enchanting banks of a river, a place that transcends geography, known as the Song Hong in Vietnam. The scene unfolds with Lori, a spirited companion, posing a question that will ignite curiosity. But in the midst of this vibrant exchange, an unexpected twist dances through the air. Lori's inquiry is met not only with judgment, but with a spontaneous eruption of candid emotion. This colorful river is known as the Song Hong in Vietnam and the Wan Chang in China. Lori? What is the yellow? Her genuine surprise catches everyone off guard, including herself, yet in the midst of the laughter that ensues, there is a profound message that emerges. Lori, in her innocence, unintentionally stumbles into the realm of racial insensitivity. It's a reminder that even the most well-intentioned among us can sometimes unknowingly perpetuate harmful stereotypes. The atmosphere crackles with shared laughter, but it's not just about the humor. It's about recognizing that we all make mistakes, and we can learn from them that truly defines us. Lori unabashedly admits her blunder, proclaiming that she knew she had messed up. It's a moment of pure authenticity and a testament to the unpredictable expression of live TV. It reminds us that we can and should confront our biases with humility, and that growth often comes from acknowledging our errors. As the clip comes to a close, we're left with a profound feeling of shared laughter and a reminder that even in the most unexpected moments, there is room for spontaneity, connection, and good-natured laughs. This is the magic of unscripted television, where real-life surprises can turn an ordinary river into an extraordinary memory. And in a world where diversity should be celebrated, we remember that combating racism begins with self-awareness and a commitment to continuous learning. As we navigate the waters of life, we should all strive to be more conscious of our words and our actions, embracing the beauty of the global community. 
Together, we can transform ignorance into understanding and intolerance into acceptance, creating a brighter future for all. Number 12. A Call for Unity and Change In a world where unity should be our guiding light, a recent viral video exposed the dark underbelly of racism, reminding everyone that prejudice still lingers in our society. The video captures a disturbing exchange between individuals and the consequences of their actions and has sent shockwaves through two separate communities. This incident occurred in Newport Beach where a couple was caught on camera making racial slurs and obscene gestures, targeting members of the Asian community. These hurtful words and actions were not only a vile display of racism, but also a stark reminder that ignorance and hatred continue to exist. America is a free country. Yep. Go back to China. Yep, thank you. Such behavior is unacceptable in a country that prides itself on freedom and diversity. The video identified the couple as Sandra and Roger Miller, with Sandra being a former employee at a Christian school. Swift and decisive action was taken against them, as the school terminated her employment immediately upon learning of the video. Many parents would express their concern and disappointment that someone who was supposed to be nurturing young minds had held such intolerant views. Roger Miller was an employee of the city of Coronado and would be placed on administrative leave pending a thorough investigation. The incident serves as a reminder that racism knows no boundaries, affecting individuals, institutions, and communities alike. It's disheartening to witness such an incident, especially when they involve those who are meant to shape the future generations. Children deserve to grow up in an environment that's free from prejudice, where they can embrace diversity and learn from one another. This incident also should serve as a wake-up call for everyone. It's not only about condemning racism, it's about actively working to eradicate it from our society. We have to teach our children the values of tolerance, acceptance, and empathy, promoting diversity in our curricula and fostering an environment of inclusion. Remember that this incident does not reflect the entire school or community. Instead, it highlights the need for ongoing efforts to combat racism in all of its forms. Together, we can build a brighter future where unity and understanding triumph over hatred and division, and it's time to turn our collective outrage into a force for positive change, creating a world where everyone is valued and respected, regardless of their background. Number 13. The Fall of Paul Henry In a world where the battle against racism rages on, one incident in the heart of New Zealand exemplifies the power of public outcry and the importance of dismantling stereotypes and prejudices. It all begins with a television host by the name of Paul Henry, whose racist remarks and inability to pronounce a name correctly would lead to a seismic career downfall. Paul Henry's blunder occurred on live television when he attempted to pronounce the name of the chief minister of Delhi, India. Also the d woman. <laughs> God, what's her name? D <laughs> Is it d Instead of taking a moment to correct himself, he simply persisted in making a mockery out of her name, but it doesn't end there. He then proceeded to make an offensive and racially insensitive comment about Indian culture, perpetuating stereotypes that have long been condemned. The fallout from his action was swift and relentless. The incident triggered outrage, not only amongst viewers, but also within the media industry. His words would reverberate across New Zealand, while also igniting a firestorm of criticism. There was no room for tolerance when it came to racial insensitivity. In the clip where the controversy unfolded, one could witness the discomfort of fellow anchors who wanted the inappropriate remarks to cease, their faces painting a vivid picture of the societal discomfort that exists when racism is allowed to persist. Even in its most mild form, Paul Henry's inappropriate comments were not only a slip of the tongue, but a reflection of a more broad issue, the perpetuation of stereotypes and racial insensitivity. In an era where we strive for equality and inclusivity, such incidents are our reminder that we have to remain vigilant against the subtle forms of racism that persist. His swift resignation demonstrates the power of accountability and the consequences of crossing the line in racial sensitivity. He acknowledged his error and the impact that it had, not only on the Prime Minister, but also on the entire Indian community. It became a step in the right direction, signaling that racist behavior has no place in the media landscape or in society. In the grand scheme of things, this incident is also a testament to the progress in combating racism, a reminder that racism should never be tolerated, regardless of how veiled or casual it may be. We have to continue to speak out against it and hold those who perpetuate it accountable. And as we move forward, we should remember the lesson from Paul Henry's downfall. It has no place in the world. 
and we have to actively challenge those stereotypes, dismantle prejudices, and work towards a more inclusive and equal society where incidents like this become a relic of the past. Number 14. Rejecting Racism and Embracing Inclusivity In a world where diversity should be celebrated, there are still moments that remind us of the work that needs to be done. More recently, a news reporter faced an unfortunate encounter with two individuals who let racism cloud their judgment. But instead of letting their hate prevail, the incident became a powerful reminder of the importance of unity and rejecting racism. A confident news reporter ready to deliver the latest updates, she's on the brink of going live, and that's when it happens. Two men, blinded by ignorance and prejudice, decide to target her. Their intentions became clear to harass and belittle her because of the color of her skin. They questioned why she was on camera, implying that she didn't belong there. However, the story takes a twist that the racist did not anticipate. Instead of engaging in a confrontation, the reporter responds with grace and dignity. Or a shit. I can't right. stand these white we are girls. done here. She encourages them to tune into Spectrum News, inviting them to educate themselves about the world around them, and refuses to stoop to their level of hatred. In a moment that could have escalated into a heated argument, this news reporter chose the path of empathy and enlightenment. She refused to let their bigotry affect her, and with poise and confidence, she reminded them that her skin color would not define her. Instead, she encouraged them to open their minds and hearts with a more broad perspective. This is Channel 9 and 1, usually. 1 and 9. Watch Spectrum News. You can find out. Go find go find a TV and watch Spectrum News. See, that's why I can't be left alone with a black woman. We are done here. Have a great rest of your day. This incident serves as a poignant reminder that racism does still exist, but it also illustrates the power of resilience and education in combating it. In just a few words, the reporter had eloquently shut down the racists, leaving them no platform for their prejudice. This incident should be a rallying cry for everyone to stand up against racism while embracing diversity. In a world where unity should be celebrated, we have to reject hate and ignorance at every turn. We should remember it's not the color of our skin that defines us, but the content of our character. And together, we can build a more inclusive and compassionate world for all. Number 15. Racial Disparities in Media, The Disturbing Incident on Live TV Now, we've all tuned into the news looking for an informed report and a glimpse into the world's events, not a stage for racially charged bickering. In a recent broadcast, we witness a disturbing incident between two news anchors that unfolded while live, and it can only be described as discouraging and disheartening. One anchor, seemingly fed up with the other's voice, made a simple request, asking his co-anchor to say a word that for some carries the weight of racism. But instead of standing up and confronting the issue, the co-anchor decided to play it safe. That's right, he chickened out, right there on live television, avoiding addressing a word that has sparked countless debates and controversies across the nation. Mm. All right, I think we can move on. Why? Why move on when you want to say it? Both of you want to say it. Huh? What's truly disheartening is the double standard at play. It's a reminder of the racial disparity that still exists in our society. We've witnessed African-American rappers reclaiming and using the word in their music and discourse. They've taken ownership of it as a means of empowerment and self-expression. But as we've witnessed, a Caucasian individual is hesitant to utter that same word, a disheartening reminder that we have a long way to go in our collective journey towards true equality and racial harmony. And before we move on from this disheartening display, we should reflect on what it represents. It reflects the challenges and divisions that we face as a society, and is also a reminder that racism is still alive, even if lurking beneath the surface. It's a call to action for everyone to do better, to confront these uncomfortable conversations head-on, and to strive for a world where every voice is truly equal.